In the history of space exploration, few tragedies have been as shocking and heartbreaking as the Challenger disaster. The Challenger Space Shuttle, one of NASA's most ambitious projects, was a symbol of innovation and the future of space travel. But on January 28, 1986, it became a symbol of one of the most devastating failures in NASA's history. This is the story of how a group of engineers foresaw the disaster, how their warnings were ignored, and how one man, Bob Ebeling, carried the guilt of this tragedy for the rest of his life. Bob Ebeling was a highly skilled NASA contractor working for Morton Thiokol, the company responsible for building the shuttle's solid rocket boosters. He was an experienced engineer who had spent years understanding the mechanics of the space shuttle. The night before the Challenger launch, Bob Ebeling came home with a heavy heart and, in an extremely sorrowful tone, told his wife, Tomorrow morning, this shuttle is going to explode. The next morning, at exactly 11.40 a.m., the space shuttle was launched. Just 73 seconds after liftoff, what Bob Ebeling had predicted happened. The shuttle exploded into pieces, turning into a massive fireball before crashing into the ocean. But the real question is, what happened that night that made Bob Ebeling so certain about this disaster? Why did the Challenger space shuttle disaster happen? And who was truly responsible for it? This event was being broadcast live around the world when, Right before everyone's eyes, the Challenger turned into a fiery explosion and disappeared into the ocean. It wasn't just a massive loss for NASA and the United States, but the horrifying tragedy also plunged the entire world into mourning. The Challenger was carrying seven astronauts into space, and their sacrifice is still remembered today. The Challenger was originally built in 1975 as part of the Space Shuttle Program for Test Services. However, in 1979, it was converted into an actual spacecraft. It was first launched in 1983, making history as the shuttle that enabled the first ever free spacewalk. It was also the same shuttle that carried America's first female astronaut into space. But this mission was receiving even more attention than usual. The reason? A school teacher named Krista McAuliffe was on board. Krista McAuliffe, a 37-year-old teacher from New Hampshire, had been selected by NASA to go into space. NASA had planned to send a teacher to space as part of a marketing strategy so that she could deliver live lessons to school children from space. This news excited school children across the country, making the media heavily cover the mission. Additionally, NASA had already announced the launch date and time and had provided schools with a live satellite feed of the event. As a result, millions of children were watching the launch in real time. Interestingly, Krista McAuliffe's presence wasn't the only reason children were so interested in the mission. NASA had initially considered sending the famous children's TV character, Big Bird, into space as well. But the idea was ultimately scrapped at the last moment. The mission's pilot was Mike Smith, who was on his first space flight. Tragically, it also turned out to be his last. Mike realized something was wrong just moments before the explosion. The last recorded words from the shuttle were from him, saying, Oh! Oh! and then all communication was lost. But Mike Smith wasn't the only one who had suspected trouble. The night before the Challenger's launch, four engineers from NASA's contractor, Morton Theocol, were already aware of the impending disaster. They had tried to warn their managers and NASA officials, urging them to delay the launch. A meeting was held that night, where these engineers explained that the shuttle had never been launched in such freezing temperatures before. This was a crucial point, because the different parts of the shuttle were connected using rubber O-rings, which could lose their effectiveness in extreme cold. However, NASA's administration did not consider this a serious issue and rejected the engineer's recommendation. One of these engineers, Bob Ebeling, returned home heartbroken and told his wife, it's going to blow up. After this disaster, Bob Ebeling retired. Many years later, in an interview, he revealed that because NASA ignored their warnings, he was never able to sleep peacefully again. Even 20 years later, he still blamed himself for the Challenger disaster. The engineers were 100% right. To understand what exactly happened that day, let's look at this diagram of the Challenger. The space shuttle, which looks somewhat like an airplane, could fly and land just like a normal aircraft. However, reaching space required immense thrust 
which in turn required enormous amounts of fuel. To store this fuel, a large orange-brown tank was attached to the shuttle, containing both liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Since space lacks oxygen, the tank carried its own supply to enable combustion. But the shuttle's three main engines alone weren't enough to propel it into space. That's why two solid rocket boosters were attached to its sides. These boosters would detach and fall into the ocean before the shuttle entered space. The key issue that day was the freezing temperature. The rubber O-rings which sealed the joints of the rocket boosters had become stiff due to the cold, preventing them from properly sealing the joints. As a result, one of the rocket boosters started leaking hot gases right at the moment of launch. These gases continuously hit the external fuel tank, heating it to extreme temperatures. At 46,000 feet, the fuel tank's structure melted, and the liquid hydrogen inside exploded with immense force. For several minutes after the disaster, there was complete silence. Initially, everyone assumed that the seven astronauts had died instantly in the explosion. However, later investigations revealed something even more disturbing. A private investigation found that the shuttle's crew cabin had not depressurized immediately after the explosion. This meant that the crew was still alive when the cabin fell into the ocean. This was the first time in NASA's spaceflight history that astronauts were lost mid-flight. The only other major tragedy had occurred 19 years earlier in 1967 when three Apollo 1 astronauts died during a ground test. On the day of the Challenger's launch, U.S. President Ronald Reagan was supposed to deliver a live speech. However, due to the disaster, he postponed his annual address and instead went on live television to express his sorrow over the tragedy. After the explosion, Challenger debris was scattered across miles of the Atlantic Ocean. Naval recovery teams worked for weeks to retrieve the remains. The Challenger disaster remains one of the most tragic moments in space exploration history. It was a failure that could have been prevented if only NASA had listened to the warnings of engineers like Bob Ebeling. Bob Ebeling carried the guilt of this disaster for decades. In one of his final interviews before his death, he said, I think that's one of the mistakes that God made. He shouldn't have picked me for that job. But in reality, it was not his mistake. It was NASA's mistake, and this mistake cost seven brave astronauts their lives.